Today's video is a continuation of the previous video that I did last week on the live demo of Summer Blues, a figurative painting. If you're new to my channel and we haven't met, my name is Pat Scrivener from Scrivener Art and Design, and I have my studio in Parksville, BC on Vancouver Island. I teach workshops in my studio and on Zoom, and I have some figurative workshops coming up. I'll leave the links in the description below. You can check those out and get more information. I'd love to have you join. So the second part of the video I did in my studio, and it's the finishing uh, kind of details. I thought I'd show you to the end. And if you watch right till the end, you'll see the painting in some room settings, which is always nice to see how it looks to scale. Without further ado, let's get started. Finishing the painting is the hard part. The details, knowing what to add, knowing what to take out. So here you see me adding another bag to this lady. And I'm painting it in rather than collaging it, adding a little bit of the blue in another place. I often like to enhance my colors by putting on another coat. I'm changing the dress on this to be more teal. So this is a decision based on how I'm feeling about the balance of the painting. So it's really good to look at the painting in black and white to see how the balance and the values look. You can also draw an imaginary line down the center and look at both sides and see if it feels visually balanced to you. I'm putting in a little bit of weight on the bottom to give it a kind of a sidewalk or curb feel. It just helps to um, give the feet something to, to rest on. In this case, the lady with the boots looked like she was hanging in the air. It's not as important when your legs go off of the page, but if you definitely have um, shoes or feet in the picture, you want to do something to ground them. I'm painting in the arms. I step back from my work a lot to make decisions. Here you see me wiping off with a rag where I didn't make a perfect stroke. So you can grab that wet paint if you do it quickly. Just putting in a little bit of darker paint on one side to give it a little more dimension on this lady here. Touching up the legs. I decided to give the one gal kind of striped stockings. And again, just enhancing the color taking out one of those square shapes. And this is a transparent paint, so the shape will still be there, but it won't be as dominant. In this particular gal, it had a piece of collage from underneath, totally unplanned, but it was a doily. And it gave her the look of a lace collar which is quite interesting how it ended up uh, in the right place. And these are happy accidents when you decide to just glue some collage down before you start. You never know where it's going to end up in your painting, if it's going to really enhance it or you're just going to have to paint over it and try and lose it. But in this case, it showed up 
very well in a good place. This gal has boots on. Um, and then painting the faces. I go back and forth to the faces many times, trying to put in some form without putting in a lot of details. Putting in a little shape on the arms as well. And now adding a hand. So I mix my uh, facial colors by using the paint on my palette and adding white and oftentimes uh, yellow. So I would use my red tone. And in this case, uh, it's quinacridone crimson. I would add white and then I would add a little bit of yellow. So it's not, not as pink, but comes out a little bit more peachy skin tone color. If you use the colors on your palette to do your whole painting instead of reaching for another tube of something that you think might work, you are going to keep a very harmonious painting. Um, you're going to end up with a very harmonious painting because you've mixed the colors and that's why I do like mixing my colors so that they all are harmonious together. To be good at grabbing colors from the tube and putting on your painting, you have to be a real expert at color. So learning to mix your colors is a very foolproof way of getting a, a well-balanced palette on your painting. So I really encourage you to work on color charts, spending the time making color swatches is really, really beneficial. So this painting is on paper. It's Strathmore mixed media paper. The size is 18 by 24. And I will mount it later. I have a video on that. I will put the link in the cards so that you can uh, watch how to mount paper. I'm changing the background color a bit, um, making it a little bit more blue rather than as yellow as it was. And this is just a personal preference that I thought I would like more contrast and a little bit of a gray down color. I'm leaving little hints of the greenish color to show through and I, I find that interesting not to cover everything up so that you have little bits and pieces of previous layers showing through. Sometimes the background color uh, if it's not light enough, your figures won't pop out forward. So that's another consideration is to check your values so that your background has a contrast so that your fig figures are standing out from it rather than blending in with it. I normally mix a big pot of neutral color that um, I modify as I go. I find this easier than mixing it up constantly on my palette. I like to use um, containers that I'm upcycling, uh, something that lotion came in, or I buy these small Ziploc containers with a lid on to keep those paints in and they stay fresh for a long time when they're in those containers. So you don't have to worry about over mixing. Another thing that's really handy to use is oversized ice cube trays. If you're not painting too big, um, they will work for quite a bit of mixed colors as well. So you do need to bring a smaller brush in as you get towards the end, just to get in closer and refine some of the 
the edges and um, the necks and stuff. Just something I can't do with a big brush, but I don't like to use a little brush too much because you can get really diddly with it. So I'm taking um, the curb down here into a more neutral color as well, so it's not as blue, and turning it on the side is going to make it a little bit easier for me to paint in between all of these legs. One of the beauties of working on paper too, of course, is that you can always crop the painting if you want to make it a different shape or part of it is not working. That is an advantage. The other advantage for me is simply storage. If I painted every painting I did on a gallery wrap canvas, I would have so many paintings um, to store and I just don't have enough room for the quantity. So this allows me to put them in flat files and I put paper or plastic in between them because acrylic will stick together, especially if it gets hot. So if you are storing them one on top of the other, be aware of that. I will sell them as works on paper, but I'll also sell them as a mounted piece. And if a gallery selects one of them, I mount them on a cradled panel, paint the edges, seal the top, um, just like any, any other painting, and um, send it off that way. There is something freeing also about painting on paper. You don't have to worry about whether it turns out or not or whether you want to finish it because the paper is only three dollars. Here I'm using a Posca pen. I love Posca pens and um, they're great for finer details. I'm putting in the straps of this bag and contemplating what else I'm going to do. So a big part of the final details are contemplation and really slowing down. I also will often take pictures and look at it on my phone so it's, it's a tiny painting. Uh, often you see little errors that way. Standing back from your work like I am right now is really important too because you can get a long shot view of it. I'm doing some acemic writing now across the bottom, again with that Posca pen. Not saying anything, but just kind of links the painting together. I don't always know why I do certain things. Uh, they're just something that jumps into my mind intuitively and I go for it, whether it's right or wrong. But this is a finished painting and I'm going to show it to you hanging on the wall in different situations and um, just a few more details here. I never know when to stop. So just going back on this gal a bit. But I do like to set my painting aside and look at it over a few days to make any last minute adjustments. So here we go to the finished piece hanging in different situations. So it could be framed like this on paper as well. If you're enjoying my videos, consider subscribing to my channel, leave a comment or a question below. I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching.